In this short video, we're going to take a look at topic 2.3, island biogeography. Because of their literally special positions on Earth, islands have a unique status in terms of geology, resource availability, and biodiversity. Being separated from larger land masses often means that islands have fewer resources and the quantity and variety of organisms on them is generally quite different when compared to the mainland. As a part of ecology, island biogeography and its concepts was first introduced in the 1960s by Robert MacArthur and E.O. Wilson. As a side note, if you really want to be impressed by a person's list of accomplishments and accolades, check out E.O. Wilson. By definition, an island is an area of land that is completely surrounded by water. Although islands do vary greatly in size, with some being no more than a few square meters and others being quite large, nearly all of them are significantly smaller than any continental land masses. Geologic processes have produced islands in small groupings like the Hawaiian Islands and the British Isles, and also as collections of thousands of islands, such as the Philippines. Geologically and geographically, islands vary in how they were formed, how large they are, and how far they are from continental land masses. Some islands exist as jagged, rocky protrusions from the sea, like Fernando de Noronha off the coast of Brazil, or like Madagascar off the southeast coast of Africa, one of the world's largest islands. Still others are the result of long dead collapsed or eroded volcanoes like this atoll. Island biogeography studies the living things and the relationships between them and their environment on islands such as those. Just as the variety of Earth's continental ecosystems vary, so do those on islands. You may recall that biodiversity exists on a variety of scales, but it is most easily observed and measured by observing species richness and species evenness. There are a number of factors that influence the level of biodiversity on an island, but the two primary variables we're going to explore in more detail are the size of the island and the distance the island is from the mainland. Other influential factors include how long species on the island have been isolated from other living things on the mainland, what kinds of natural resources are present on the island, what the island's climate is like, as well as the ocean currents that surround it that carry in nutrients, and what level of human activity is present. Since the two main factors influencing biodiversity on islands are size and distance, let's take a look at those more closely now. All else being equal, island size and the biodiversity on that island are directly proportional. The larger the island is, the greater biodiversity that island is likely to have. This can be attributed to the fact that the larger islands are more likely to have a greater quantity and variety of abiotic resources. That, of course, would allow for a greater quantity and variety of producers, supporting a greater quantity and variety of consumers. When it comes to the island's distance to the mainland, the general rule is, islands that are closer are more likely to have greater biodiversity than islands that are farther away. The main reason for this one is a simple one it's easier to get to an island that's close by. Migrating animals or plant seeds carried by water or wind currents are more likely to reach nearby destinations than farther ones. This helps to explain why animal life on islands tends to be limited to those that are small, that can fly, or that can swim, and rarely includes large terrestrial animals and or mammals. On a continental landmass, different kinds of ecosystems often border or even overlap with one another. This means that resources can be replenished and transported more easily from one ecosystem to another, and that organisms can migrate and interact with a variety of ecosystems. On an island, however, the ecosystem generally ends at the water's edge. 
islands both suffer and benefit from physical isolation. While a decreased variety of abiotic resources may be present, it also means that islands are more likely to have endemic species. Endemic species are those that are found only in one particular area. Arguably, one of the most famous and well-studied collection of islands is the Galapagos Islands in the Pacific Ocean, nearly a thousand kilometers from the west coast of South America. A number of iguana species exist in the Caribbean, Mexico, and Central and South America, but unlike their land-dwelling cousins, the marine iguana found only in the Galapagos Islands swims. Charles Darwin, famous in evolutionary biology, identified a variety of finch species found only on these islands. More than that, he was able to connect specific species of finch found only on particular islands in the Galapagos because of the food sources available on a given island. There are nearly a dozen species of Galapagos Island tortoise. Being found on only a particular island, each species can be identified by its shell morphology, the color and shape of the shell. These very special, unique examples of endemic species are at a far greater risk of endangerment and possible extinction because they're found in only one place on Earth. Species that have evolved on an island at a distance away from the mainland with likely fewer and less varied resources, generally that means endemic island species are specialists. They have evolved to take advantage of a very narrow range of abiotic and biotic resources and are therefore unlikely to survive were any one of those resources to be depleted or eliminated. Just as on the mainland, specialist species have little tolerance for change and more readily suffer the consequences of change. To summarize our look at island biogeography, we're going to take a short look at a video by EcoSapien. After a four hour flight, we landed on a small island 520 kilometers off the coast of Africa. Climatically and geographically distinct, home to an astonishing floral diversity, this island is Madeira. So we've already established that Madeira is an island. And filming in such a place opens up a perfect opportunity to talk about island ecology and the potential conservation issues that islands face. So let's start with Madeira. Madeira is a volcanic archipelago made up of three main islands. Porto Santo, the oldest island, the Desertus Islands, and Madeira itself the largest of the three. The islands are part of a larger chain, Macronesia, all of which are volcanic in origin. Macronesia is famous for its unique flora. Probably most famous are its subtropical laurel forests, made up of evergreen and hardwood trees, highly adapted to high rainfall and humidity. In actual fact, this forest is a relic from a time when similar vegetation covered the Mediterranean basin and was therefore designated a World Heritage Site in 1999. Madeira is often referred to as the floating garden, and no wonder. For an island only 801 kilometers in area, it's home to over 760 species of plant. 140 of these are endemic. The island is also home to an endemic lizard, which is actually very common can be found on most walls and rock faces around the island. So why does Madeira have so many endemic species? Well, let's look at the ecological processes involved. Separated from continents by miles of water makes islands pretty isolated. Like Madeira, oceanic islands are formed by volcanic activity or even coral reef growth. 
This new patch of land is open to colonization and exploitation by organisms. The trouble is, the only way to reach the island is by sea, flight, or even being blown over by the wind. This means organisms with a high dispersal capability, i.e. plants and birds, are much more common on islands. So animals like mammals that have a poor dispersal capability rarely make it to isolated islands. Over time, ecological succession takes place. Some species that arrive survive and form populations. Because of the isolation, islands tend to be much less biodiverse than mainland ecosystems and exhibit low genetic variability. But there is an upshot of the isolation Void of traditional predators and competitors that species might have previously evolved with, they take advantage of new niches. As a result, speciation occurs, producing species that are often unique to an island or a group of islands. As biodiversity goes, islands are extremely important, making up a sixth of the Earth's total land area. And as a result of their endemism, island ecosystems account for 30% of the world's biodiversity hotspots. Because of the relatively small population size of many endemic island species, they are particularly vulnerable to extinction. This is sometimes caused by natural events, such as hurricanes. But these days, island extinctions are usually a direct result of human disturbance. So let's look at Madeira again. The island's been in contact with humans most probably since 72 BC, but it became truly colonized from 1420 onwards by the Portuguese. With human colonization has come two main issues. Unfortunately, modern infrastructure and an increasing island population have led to the clearance of much of the laurel forests and other habitats. Now the laurel forest only exists in small pockets endangering much of its unique flora and fauna. So in this episode, we've had a brief introduction to island ecology. Many of the conservation issues that face Madeira also face other islands around the world. That wraps up our look into island biogeography. Thank you for watching, and until the next video, take care.